beast, isn't they? Chuffed to bits. The smallest little thorn back. No, I'm just concentrating on not losing the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mallet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I've got two rods in the water and I'm fishing. And where am I fishing? Oh, it's a glorious morning. Absolutely glorious. I am fishing Chesil Bay on the River Itchen. So it's just down from Northern Bridge below Kemp's Key. And it's a, it's an estuary, it's a big bend in the river. So it's got big mud flats and there's loads of birds, wading birds and that down at that end. And, and the tide has still got a lot to run at the moment. So I've had to walk down through the mud to even be able to put a line in the water. But, but, but it's winter time, it's, it's the itching. Sammy the seal hasn't shown up yet. And Sammy the seal eats all the fish. <laughs> so if he shows up some point during this fishing session, there isn't going to be much hope, to be honest. Um, but I'd like to winkle out, winkle out. If I could winkle out one tiny fish during this session, it would be a massive success because shore fishing, southern waters, January, February time, it's, it's pretty grim, to be honest. You get more chance out on a boat, but from the shore, it's hard work. So what am I up to? I'm fishing a wishbone rig. A wishbone rig with loads of bejazzle. So I've got, I've tried a mixture across four hooks, two rods, four hooks. I've got orange and yellow, really bright, luminous beads. I've got orange and yellow beads with little spinners on. I've got green and black silicons. Um, and it's a mixture and it's different across all four of the hooks. No two hooks are the same. And they're all being tipped off with very small ragworm. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm out for a few hours, COVID restrictions, angling trust guidelines. Um, this is as local as I can get. Straight line from my house to the nearest piece of water. I think this is two miles. One thing I found really disappointing. It must be because it's a tidal river. The amount of plastic. There is plastic everywhere. And I'm going to do a bit of a beach trawl, I think. So I found a couple of plastic bags. And I'm going to do my best to clear this entire area where I am at the moment. It's just very small bits of plastic. Big plastic, small plastic. You can see it's just all washed up on the tide line. I don't know if it all comes into the freshwater side of the river and then the tide pushes and squeezes it pushes and pushes it up onto the beach. But so much plastic. I'm going to have a good clear through. While I'm doing this session, I'm going to have a good clear through. See if I can find any more bags and then uh, pick up as much as I can. But yeah, happy days. Out fishing. It's cold, but it's not too cold because there's very, very light winds. Forecast is absolutely spot on. Very light winds and the sun's out. The rods that I'm fishing are 12 foot 9 Shakespeare. Uh, I think they're agilities, yeah, agilities. Shakespeare, 12 foot nine agilities. Beach fishing rods, but they haven't got much power to them. I've had these rods for quite some time now. Um, and what I find that they're best suited to is this kind of estuary type work. So there is a chance of a decent sized bass and on one of these rods, you could land it. But when you're talking pound, pound half, two pound fish, four ounce weights, multiple small hooks, all that kind of stuff. That's where these rods, because they've got a really flexible top end to them, but they don't quite match with power down the bottom end. And I've matched them up, and these are a long-term favorite of mine. I do chop and change my gear from time to time, replace, review, buy new, trade in old stuff, sell my old stuff. But I've kept these Shimano Beastmasters um, throughout, and they've just got 18 pound F1 line on, and I've got a 60 pound shock leader, I think it is. A little bit higher gunned for what we're fishing. There's no need for 18 pound line. It's clean ground, there's no snags. It's all muddy, um, but that's what was on there. And that's what I fished with previously. So I've left it on. 
I'm getting close to doing a, a bait check in a minute because early on in the session, especially with estuary conditions, it's too cold for crabs really, I, I think, but you want to check, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and if it's okay, next time around 15, 20 minutes, maybe extend it up to maybe 20, 25 minutes. But you don't want your bait to be washed out. There's no point being here with rubbish bait out there or clean hooks that aren't fishing. So I'm going to get a spare rig, a complete spare rig, because these haven't got detachable snoots on these. Um, we'll have a look, see what we've got. So I've got one here. Oh, I just had a bite then. Both rods went, so I couldn't tell which one it was. That got my attention. <laughs> Something did just hit that then. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, there's nothing out on the water, so it's not like a bird that's gone past or anything. You know, like a swan or a duck or something. That was quite a heavy hit, that. Well, I'm getting close to a bait check anyway. <laughs> when they come out the wallet, they either come out really good or really bad. That one just came out really bad. <laughs> because it's a wishbone rig, as the description says, there's a wishbone at the end and the line's free to travel between the two. And you can see my bejazzle, all my jingles on there. So what I do with the rest of the rig, I just lay it across my lap. So I'm just dealing with the hooks. And then I just take one of the hooks and drop the other hook out of the way. because I'm trying to do this through the camera. I'm all a bit cack-handed. One ragworm, fine wire hook, size one. And just feed them in through the mouth parts. And you want to get as much of the worm fed up and over the hook. Now this one, they're either, they go on like a dream, or they fight you. This one's fighting me. <laughs> so there he is. Dress all the bejazzle down and then the slide in near preen bait stop. And that is it. And I don't want too much tail on there and I don't want too much hanging off because it will just get, excuse my language, it will just get pulled off. There's a time and a place for getting pulled off. And my ragworm today isn't one of them. So this is the other hook. Feed him on. If I make faces, I can't help it, because I just think, poor little critter, he was all right talking to his mates. Next minute, he's got a fine wire hook going through him. <laughs> I wouldn't want a fine wire hook going through me. And then once that's on there, these are tiny little ragworm. I'm going to have words with the bait, bait shop where I got these from. They're rubbish. Um, and there's the wishbone, and it's free to run. So when it lays on the bottom, they pretty much lay in tandem like that, one behind the other. That's how they will naturally lay. SRT spring above and below beads, and that's the bit that will clip onto the rod top. There's my wishbone, and this is the bit now. So I now lay the hooks the other side of my lap. And get myself a weight. Oh, there we go. And I'm just using, I'm not sure what that is, three, three and a half ounce continental weight. I'm looking forward to checking that rod. Sometimes flounder will give a hit like that and then they just sit on the bait. But the problem is if you leave them too long, what they'll do is they'll take it really deep and then they're very difficult to unhook. So I'm going to bait check that rod now. And that's it. Continental weight with an imp. And then that wishbone arrangement just needs clipping down, hanging up. I'm just going to lay this down here for now. Have that rod in. I've got a clump of weed or something because it's coming, but it's coming slow. Yeah, I've got a clump of weed by the looks of it. Don't really want to be going down in the mud. Ooh, don't want to sink in the mud. Because <laughs> I haven't got wellies on. I've just got a pair of riggers boots. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that on the mic microphone, but that's how sloppy this mud is. 
maybe I should have bought my waders. Lesson for next time, I think. So nothing on that one and a bit of a mess of my rig, to be honest. Just caught some weed on the retrieve. Let's give that a clean up. <laughs> it's a bit of a muddy mess, that. But until the tide comes in, that's what we're dealing with. The mud is the reason the ragworm are here. And the flounder, if they are here, if they haven't been eaten by Sammy, they're here for the ragworm. Excuse me if I'm uh, breathing heavy and sniffing. It is windy, it is cold. And the microphone is right next to my grid, like it should be. So there we are, rigged and clipped up, ready to go back out. Because I don't need distance on this. I literally need it to get into the water. The fish follow the water line up. So they're not at distance. Um, I'm not going to get that muddy again now. I'm just going to cast from here. And away she goes. That is as far as I need be. I do believe in places like this, sometimes people overcast, they cast past the fish. The fish are coming into this mud flat to feed on the mud flat. They're not here to stay out at distance, otherwise there wouldn't be no point in them coming in. So there's that one. I'm fairly confident that was a bite, but it did look like a school bass bite to me, so not the species I'm targeting. And quite often, when you chuck out in places like this, if you're gonna get a bite, it's in the first few minutes. I'd love to have a flounder out of here today. Sort of reinvigorate my, um, my feelings towards the river because it, the rivers on, along the south coast, Hamble, Itchin. Um, we used to come down here as kids and catch dozens of flounder, literally dozens. I was going to bring Jasper the fishing hound, but I know that's a good choice that I didn't now, because he would have been absolutely caked in mud by now. He'd have been down to the water's edge, shoulder deep in mud. I'd have had to have rescued him at least once. And then he'd be sat next to me now, shivering, going, Dad, I'm cold. <laughs> there we are. Baited, cleaned, prepped, ready to go. It's not clipped down yet, because it's a bit muddy. I don't really want to touch it unless I have to. I'm just going to hang that on there. And I'll clip it up in a minute when I've recovered. That one's got the most bejazzle on it, so I'm interested to see how that one fares. I'm going to try a little experiment with this. So <laughs> I'm just going to clip this down. In fact, I'm not going to clip it down because that might affect it. So I'm not going to clip it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this at the water's edge, literally just so that it's in two inches of water, if that. It's going to be hard to get it as close as I want it to be. It's going to pendulum it out. And I'm going to leave it there. That is literally on the water line. It's just about wet. <laughs> be interesting. I used to do this as a kid. Left rod's got a bit of go in it. Oh, and that's all slack line. I reckon that'd be a bass. The fact that it's got a little bit of go in it, I reckon this is just going to be a little schooly bass. But, it's going to save the blank. <laughs> that wind's starting to pick up now. Tide's worked its way most of the way up. Be interesting to see what we got here. Oh, he's not too keen on coming in. Yeah, he's a nice little schooly bass. I say little schooly bass. He's not bad size for it. He is tiny. A teeny tiny bass. Bristling. 
these young ones, these these like juvenile school ones, they're always so brisant. Right, we're gonna have to sort you out with a disgorger, buddy. Right, let's get him sorted. Get this little critter back in. Up the right way, mate. Up the right way. There you go. And away he goes. You can still see him. There he goes. <laughs> little tiny bass. Save the blank. Cheers, buddy. Save the blank. No flounder yet, though. Little teeny bass. Just saves the blank. <laughs> Bite looks quite good on those little thin tip rods, don't they? They do jangle well. Um, nothing to write home about. But catching's catching, isn't it? It's cold once your hands are wet. That wind's definitely starting to pick up a bit. I don't know if the microphone's with the little um, fluffy bit on it, whether it's cancelling it out or not. That's the rig when it's clipped down. You can see the beads and the spinners, the worm and the pyramid weight. That's all just clipped into an imp. Nothing too complicated. I am going to fire this one out if I can avoid the trees. Love to catch a flounder, just to know they're still there. They're certainly not there in any kind of numbers. Mm. I've been adding to these two baits just adding worm each time rather than stripping it all off but I'm going to tidy these right up now I tidy them right up take all the worm off and put a bunch it's sort of shot to nothing really um, nothing's really happening it is quiet so I'm going to go shot to nothing and I'm going to head hook two or three worms on each because the bass love a bunch of head hook worm. And this is, <laughs> it's pretty much a bit strange really because this, this whole rig is designed to try and avoid the bass. Try and avoid the bass um, and target the flounder. But I'm getting into a position now where something, anything is better than nothing. And these worm are that bad. They won't last another day, so I won't be able to save them for tomorrow or anything. So I am literally, that is it. He's literally just through the mouth and straight out the side of the head. And then the next one, exactly the same. So just looking at how, how that one's just gone on, I think there's room for three just head hooked. So they are literally just like that now give a lot more movement. <sighs> These worm are, are on their last on their last legs anyway. I think they're a good few days old, you know, and they haven't been looked after very well. So they might have gone hot cold, hot cold, you know. In that of fridges or something. Because they're very lethargic, very um doomed. Right, so that is three worm all head hooked and then I'll slide my bejingles down my bejazzles and that's one side and obviously it's a wishbone rig so I've got the other hook on the other side now the other side had all the green and black silicons this one's got the brights Take all this worm off. Still keep and obviously keep focus on your rod tips. You never know what's going to happen. It can all change. 
in a split, you know, literally in minutes, you can go from zero to hero. You can do that on the last cast of the day. And there's been a few sessions, even ones that I've managed to film, where that's happened. Could be packing away. Last rod, last cast. But go head hooked for a few of these as well. I might go crazy, I might go four. <laughs> let's go, let's go four head hooked. Four head hooked worm. Now if I was rigging these for the place, place, flounder, if I was rigging these for the flounder, I tend to put, thread the whole worm onto the hook. And then sometimes, like a little tiny one like that, put it on as an extra tail. So it's almost like two tails coming off. At the moment, this is just gonna be like a big flappy, flappy mess of worm. I call it a mess of worm, because they're all just head hooked and they're all just flapping around. So there's that one, that, just a mess of worm. They're very small worm, they're very lethargic, they're pretty poor quality. And to give you an idea of what's going out, that's the one with the green and blacks, that's the one with the uh, orange and yellows. And I'll put this out, put it up on the rig, ready for the next bait change. Clean my hands up a little bit. Clean my hands up a little bit because obviously transfer it all onto the rods and the reels and all that lot and then before you know it it's everywhere. Have a quick uh, uh, of your nose and you find yourself you've got a ragworm tuff up there. <laughs> right, so something we haven't done for a while is the comments section. Let's do some comments. So bring it up on the phone. Let's have a look. Where are we at? So, comments. So I posted up that I'm out fishing and someone's already posted up when's the video out. <laughs> You'll see it when it comes out. Um, lots of comments about the recent competition. Recent competition entries um, and, the, and the prizes. Um, Okay, so the boat running ledger, the Solent rig that I put up the video, someone's commenting that the, um, you know, the, the three turns back through and three turns again to warn that that can slip and that knot can fail. I personally have never had it fail on me, but I've tried it on other lines and it might be down to line choice, the reason why the person's quoting, and that's Fester Adams. Um, Amnesia, Sukuma, I don't get any slippage on those lines, but when I've tried it, that same knot on the F1, that main line on the F1, it doesn't like F1, so I can see that it might be line, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Intolerant. <laughs> um, so I'm going through, I'm looking for something that's different than the competition. Um, okay, here's one. Uh, so, the comparison video I did between Gemini and Trident, when I did, uh, I think that was a pulley rig. Someone's asked, is there a follow-up video where I fish them side by side? I've tried to comment on all the videos where I've used either or. Um, so, my favourite components for the up and over rig, for the, my face is cold, for the up and over rig, is definitely the Gemini. My favourite components for the pulley, is actually the Trident. And I use Termalinks to end all my main line from on the ends of my reels, um, because I like them. They, 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 they snap onto a swivel really nicely, and that's all good. Um, the video that we did last year, and I did the Shaw Court 174 pound skate, common skate. There's been a few comments on that recently. Um, have a look what else we got. People just commenting on the live stream. I don't do too many live streams. I don't want it to be a live streaming channel. 
I do them mainly for the competition releases or if something significant's happened that I think's worth talking about. Um, Solent night and day when I did the boat when I was out overnight on the boat. Uh, just from we love to fish just comment in um, yeah what we catch what we show it's not always good you know it's good bad or indifferent Nick Mann supporting the channel helping out with comments and other bits and pieces technical queries I appreciate Nick's help um, I asked I asked on the live stream about um, bearings for my Pen 525 Mag 3s. One of my reels has got a definite rattle and it's been used about half a dozen times, six, seven times. So I did strip it down the other day and I was going to do a video on that, but I thought, no, I'll wait until my new bearings come and then I'll do a strip down rebuild just replacing the bearings. But I got an option. So I went to my local tackle shop and I asked him if he could order me the bearings um, and I want upgraded bearings, ceramic bearings. And he was going to go to his real guy, the guy that refurbs and does the real work for him. And it came back, did I want them degreased, ultrasonic, and then re-oiled? Yeah. So basically, he degreases them three times, puts them through an ultrasonic bath, dries them out, and then puts rocket oil on them. And then I've ordered, when the bearings arrive, a bottle of rocket oil. Um, just because I want to try it. Try it, show it, show it on the channel. I'll rebuild my reels um, and then we'll go from there. And then we'll have all the normal comments where you can tell me if I've done something wrong or if you like what I've done or how I've done it. But yeah, I looked. At, I found one of the bearings and it's definitely gone. But I'll show that when I do the reel strip. The introduction. So I don't know if my introduction is annoying people, but the plan is to gently change the introduction as we go through the year. So if we do more fishing trips and there might be a significant fish, I'll drop one of the fish out of the introduction and put the new one in. So it should change throughout the year. The, the introduction at the beginning of the year won't be the same as the introduction at the end of the year. And that 60 seconds is going to be just those little, shit, um, little short clips that are all clipped together to, to, to do the introduction. So that's the plan with it it's not going to be the same all the way through it will change peter bryan says that he's a great fan of the pulley rig and he's been making them with the gemini pulley bead and the splashdown uh, so that'd be the solo splashdown and he's ordered some tri trident gear to try it out uh, he's watched the video and he's, he's interested to see it so peter bryan yeah give it a go totally recommend it it's um it's a good price I haven't made an up and over rig with trident tackle because I don't like the way the pulley rig works in that orientation where it comes back on itself. I might have a play and see what, what the score is, but I'm not too sure about it, to be honest. Um, Richard Morgan, a few days passed because I haven't done comments for a while. First time he's commented on the channel. Appreciate your support, buddy. Thank you very much. Um, and JB, B, J, small b, capital B. Um, he wants to go skate fishing with his wife, with his missus. Um, da -da -da -da. And he'd like to get out and have a go. Yeah. Enter the competition, buddy. Enter the competition, see what happens. Um, quite a few people commenting. That I've been doing a bit on the boat that they'd like to see more beach stuff. Yeah, I like getting out on the beach as well. But it's notoriously difficult this time of year. There isn't much about. Beach fishing along the south coast this time of year the fish move out into deeper water, and deeper water means boat fishing. Um, let's have a look. I had that little bit of a scare where I had to isolate for a while, and I appreciate all the support and the good and the nice comments from everyone. Um, it was precautionary. It was some work. It was just send you home, isolate, test, and see how you get on. And the test came back negative. <laughs> My feelings do go out if you if you've had any experience of what's going on at the moment with COVID. My my, you have my heartfelt um, appreciation because it's difficult. There's a lot of people out there where it's making life very difficult, work, family, home, all of those things. Um, just try and skip past some of those. We we'll do a few more. Um, get past the COVID result one because that seems to generate quite a lot of support on the channel. Um, 
keeping an eye on my rods. <laughs> a whole load of swans, and I don't know what a big, is it a flock? Do swans still class as a flock? And two of them hit my line. And it was interesting to see. They literally about turn, swam back, and then out. They knew what to do. <laughs> they, 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 they did know what to do. Okay, and really, we're going back into Christmas. So thank you for all the Christmas wishes. Um, the Christmas competition was a cracker. I can't believe it was someone so close that actually won it. You know, that was pure fluke. I can't, I can't do anything with the machine. The machine picks. Um, yeah. So I think we've gone back to about Christmas time. So a lot of comments on competitions, a lot of comments on the COVID thing that happened recently. Um, not a lot of beach fishing videos. I, I totally appreciate that. We'll, we'll, I'll do my best. We'll get out. I enjoy my beach fishing. Um, but this time of year, it does lend itself more to a bit of boat fishing, to be honest. And there's still unicorns out in the Solent. So excuse me if I go out and chase the unicorns and the bigger eels. I'd like a bigger eel. I've had a 20 pounder, didn't get it into the boat because I lost it trying to get it over the gunnel. Um, I'd like to get a 40 pound in the boat weighed just, just because that's my target. And as always, you know, I love a ray. Ray fishing's always good. I love ray fishing. I don't know if you can see there, but those swans have just stopped in their tracks. I think they can see the line. They can see my fishing line. In fact, there is a piece of weed hanging on the line, look. And they're very careful, and they swim around it. There's one, look, that swan there, he's just seen that bit of line, and he's just backed away. You might think, oh, I've got to pull that in, I've got to dip my line, I've got to do this. They're very clever. They know exactly what they're doing. That's one there, look, catching up with the others. <laughs> I'm now into slow pack up mode. So I've just fresh baited both, both rods and they're out there fishing. Last chance saloon, if anything wants to come and play. I just missed that last bite. It looked very much like a bass bite to me. And going by the way it jangled, it would have been a small schoolie. The baits weren't tore up particularly, so sort of says to me that it was a small, small fish plucking away at it. Um, I'm just cleaning up these rigs now. Well, this is the third rig. So the one that I've always had baited and on standby. Ready for quick changeovers when, when, the, when the rigs come in. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna tidy this up. The seagulls. <laughs> God, there's a lot of birds in the distance there. Um, I had a kingfisher fly past earlier and I couldn't get it on film. So fast. Fast little critters. You know, we're quite urban here. I've got a train line behind me. I've got docks opposite me. We're a river. It's running through the centre of Southampton. Um, just tidying up this rig. Going to wrap it up. I always wash my rigs when I get home anyway. They always get fresh water washed and soapy water hung up to dry out. And it sounds a little bit backward, but then when they're dry and I'm finished and I'm tinkering, beavering away, then I check them and see if they're worth cutting up to harvest components back off them or whether they're good enough for fresh hooks or even to just be used again. Bigger hook rigs I do use more than once. Smaller hooked, chemically sharpened hooks, I don't use those again because you never get that chemically sharpened. It doesn't keep it after once it's been in the water. So that's one rig recovered. I'll put it back in the wallet and then I don't put them inside the sleeve. So what I do is I just put them in the fold of the sleeve because they're wet. If you put them in the sleeve, they sort of rust, accelerate rust. If you just put them in the fold of the sleeve, when you come back and you go home, you open it up, shake it out into a bucket of soapy water and that's, that's, that's how I do it. That's the routine that I do. Um, see what time it is. It's five past three. So I'm going to give that rod about 10 minutes, that rod about 15 minutes. So if anything wants to play, last chance saloon, now's the time. <laughs>
one schoolie bass, one schoolie bass jingle. That's all of that. Well, this is me starting to do the pack up. Quite an uneventful fishing session, I suppose. Didn't get our target species today. So that brings me to the end of a, a quiet session, I suppose, is the best description. But an enjoyable one nonetheless. One little school bass from my troubles, a couple of little rattles, one reasonable bite that I missed. I hope you enjoyed the film. Please like, subscribe. Subscription is free and it doesn't cost anything, but it really, really helps support the channel. Really helps support the channel with the YouTube analytics, who gets to see it and all those other things. So a subscribe would be very much appreciated. That's all for me for today. Take care, tight lines, happy fishing. Hope to spend some time with you again sometime soon. From me, for now, from here, <laughs> it's goodbye. Take care.